I'm Diego Cordovez with Adam Schoenfeld on the scoop from the Bellagio. Now, uh, I get the impression, even though you're in your late fifties, yeah, that you're you have sort of a Timothy Leary role in the poker world. You have you're friends with a lot of these young, up and coming guys, and uh, like a Spengali, a Rasputin, yeah. and you're involved in their psychedelic. Uh, yes, I'm involved in their psychedelic Is that accurate or just my impression? That I, I'm, a, I'm a father figure to many and especially to today's guest, Shane Schlager. I mean, he openly <laughs> adores me. Does this, do, uh, do these young guys, they just... Is this an attempt to kind of recapture your youth or relive your youth or, or what, what's the... It's a pathetic, the, misguided crisis type thing where I have to hang out with younger guys so I don't feel quite as bad. And any younger girls involved in this? I'm trying, but so far no good. <laughs> Already made one final table and uh, trying to put together some more results here at the World Series. Yeah, well, already, I mean, I'm very grateful that I made one, but at the same time, yeah, it's kind of like a long, daunting summer. Describe the event and your run to glory there. Thousand dollar rebuy, my rightful place in fifth, my rightful. Uh, you own fifth. I own fifth place in the one. In the, in the, they run two one k rebuys, and I've taken fifth in the early one twice. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of uncanny and weird. Uh, this year, felt a little bit better prepared to maybe make a run for the win, but uh, poker got stopped me at fifth again. It was still a good experience and kind of just like a weird oddity to. Uh, take the same position, the same spot in the same event that I did two years ago, which kind of started my live poker career you know, notable, on the map. Notable hands? Um, I mean, not really. You'll see them on TV. I get so <laughs> bored of poker hands, especially from tournaments I played. You know, you know this is a poker thing we're doing. I didn't really realize that. <laughs> I thought it was just, you know, come to chat. Well, we could do that too, but so no notable hands. That, uh, I mean, there were some notable hands. Um, but I don't feel like getting into them. I mean, the the ones at the final <laughs> table that were notable, you know, briefly I sucked out to get a million chips and then got sucked out on twice to bust. Uh, the final table structures here suck, by the way. It's like they butchered them since last year. I don't know exactly why. Uh, you know, last year they had they've taken levels out. They've taken levels out, and right. the, the extra chips don't don't really. I mean, the the, the funny thing is that what they've done is they doubled the starting chips. So they said. Double chips, which implies double the amount of play. It's like double but the reality orders. is, they Fantastic. double they double the number of chips. Double is they more. Doubled, they double the level, so really the proportion of chips to the levels is the same. Well, right. But then they took out a few levels, so actually there's less play because with those levels yeah. gone, you move to the later stages much faster. The early the stage play might be a little bit better. The late the stage play is markedly worse. I mean, yeah. it's so obviously worse. And of course, that's the reverse of what it should uh, be. What it should if be, if yeah. it happened to be a little faster at the beginning, I still wouldn't love that. No, I, I accept that. Almost everyone agrees. But to play at the end when you're down to the the, the money, shouldn't that be? Uh, of course. I mean, last year they had. Uh, last year at least they they made changes from you know based on buy-in. So a fifteen hundred dollar buy-in had I think a slightly different uh, blind structure than the five k. I might be wrong about that, but I know for sure there was like a a five ten thousand level and maybe a twenty five five. Just the levels that make it much more playable. Then looks like the main event's the only. It's in structure this year. Yeah, the one thing, although in the main event also they've taken out levels. Have they? So it could be that uh, they'll suffer from some of the same problems. Yeah, the main event they've taken out, uh, taken out like the 150, 300. Oh, right. And then there are two 200, 400 levels, so it's different, and that's going to be, then those are important times in the tournament. But then later on in the tournament they took out a few. Did where, they? Uh, I yeah, mean, I checked, like I checked briefly for like a 12, 24, and they had that, whatever. But uh, it's crazy because the World Series, the one thing it had, I mean, it, it had some fast early action, but we had long four, six, eight hour final tables, which was awesome. Because, right. I mean, besides the bracelet, the money that's at stake really uh, was yeah, fantastic I mean, for. Yeah, this is work for a lot of us. Uh, and, you know, uh, my, my friend Nick Shulman was at the final table yesterday. I heard it was going to start at like two or three, and at like five, I, heard, I was in LA and I heard, heard who had won it. I couldn't believe that it had ended so fast. I mean, they started with 20, 20 40,000 blinds, and, you know, and I guess they no one, no one had way more than a million chips. It's just like you're getting in there and you're flipping coins for the big money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still fun to do that, but it's ridiculous. You haven't been playing these for a long time. I mean, you had a big run in the U.S. Poker Championship. I saw you on ESPN repeatedly. Big run, they small tournament. They seem to focus on you a lot. <laughs> but you haven't been playing these for a while. You really played online like a lot of guys and then kind of made the transition to playing these big live events, it seems like. I... Well, I mean, I kind of... What, what's the question? What were you asking? <laughs> Shane, you may not know this, Diego. I knew Shane when he was just learning at the low limits in New York. And, you know, just like a lot of us came up in the yeah. young club scene in New York. Talk about that transition to That's superstar. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm far from <laughs> superstar, but I actually started out as a losing low limit player. Mm -hmm. uh, in club. Live. In li first in a... a 
Sandia, New Mexico, in an oh, really? Indian card room. I went out, basically, oh. I went out to uh, Albuquerque, where my best friend was living. And I didn't know this. No. Well, well, here you go. Shame, yeah. And, uh, you know, when I was like 21 or 22, he was playing blackjack. And then the next year I went out there, he was playing Hold'em. And I started futzing around with like one to five stud. And I played losing one to five stud, you know, consistently for yeah. a summer. You were playing for fun. Yeah, well, I don't know why I was playing. I just, I didn't really, it took me even years after that to realize that poker could be played for uh, for profit and for a living. Uh, I, you know, I just thought it was a gambling game. I don't know why I'm playing now. Yeah. <laughs> and then actually, uh, I didn't really have a huge love for it at the time, but uh, a few years later I met, or a couple years later, it was post 9-11, like April of 2002, I met a fellow named Tristan Baum, who Adam, who Adam knows. Uh, he introduced me to the New York club scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, right away, this this sort of prosperous club, this club that prospered for a while on 14th Street called the PlayStation, was where I met Adam. A lot of uh, a lot of New York players uh, of the modern era sort of passed through there. Was this like, like what we see in Rounders? Um, you go down and there's a... It was Lord, even more Russian mobsters. I know it was. It was. It was so. It was more like um, I, I don't know. What, what could you liken it to? It was more like going to like an exercise studio in New York or something. Except that we were playing poker. It was like mm -hmm. the most unintimidating. PlayStation sort of didn't have that atmosphere right. like you see in Rounders. Except other clubs in New York did. Uh, Houston Street. Before all oh, Genoa, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. There were other clubs yeah. that that had. So there was that element, but this was very antiseptic. PlayStation was sort of like uh, like poker stars before, you know, like a, a real life version of poker stars. You know, they had their small rebuy tournaments, and they had a limit game and a no limit game. And it was very uh, welcoming to a lot of people. Right. And the only thing I really sort of had a natural knack for was those rebuy tournaments. So, uh, and then I started playing online. I uh, went through the same process of like losing and not really, you know, f realizing how much more I had to learn about the game. Mm -hmm. So I uh, lost a lot for a while online. And, just you know, slowly banged away at it and figured out what it took to be winning, and took whatever natural elements made my game, you know, in the, in those rebuy tournaments good, and, and just tried to harness them. Was it just a matter of experience, or were there any specific things you did to improve your game? Whether it's uh, I, I other learning from other players, or reading, or both those things. But I mean, yeah. it all falls under experience and confidence. I mean, I read a little bit. I don't think I've ever read a poker book uh, cover to cover, but I've mm -hmm. skimmed them all and I've discussed most of the important concepts with people. So I think just you know being curious, naturally curious, asking a lot of questions, uh, and uh, yeah, studying and just practice. Practice, practice. You know, uh, something that strikes me about you, and this works to your benefit, of course, uh, is that whenever you're on TV, something notable happens. So talk about your final table a couple of years ago with Michael Grotz and what happened there, and then how about last year's main event with uh, Eric Molina? And I'll have some comments <laughs> upon that as well. Well, the most notable thing about the 2005 final table was really that I bluffed all my chips off with King Jack. But you got called by a fairly weak And hit. got called by Ace High, which was, I mean, the call was really, I mean, bluffing all my chips with King Jack is standard. Um, I, 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 first of all, I made a fundamental mistake setting up the bluff. You know, I should have at least made a continuation bet on the flop. I probably could have won it with the continuation bet. Uh, what's really, what stands out about the hand to me two years later is that you know at the time I wasn't aware that anyone could make a call there with Ace High. I mean he I wasn't either. He practically check called his whole tournament. I'm talking about Michael Grox, Michael Grox, another super good young player. Very you know. Well, you know, light years ahead of me for all intents and purposes, especially at that time. Uh, he had already won the party mm -hmm. million. And, uh, you know, he had a thing where he liked making big calls, and that's part of his game. But at the time, I, I was, you know, I didn't... In that tournament, he made a series of big calls. He, he, at least he yeah, showed some big, he big did. calls. On that, that final table, he, he mixed it up with David Pham. Uh, now, there's a little controversy that you and I were discussing on the... Now, it's not too controversial. Yeah, it's small controversy. Okay, I claim to be the victim of editing... Um, ESPN editing, you're saying. Yes. In infamy, it will live that I blew Michael Grox a kiss during this hand that we're talking Before about. Before he called. And that may right. have induced him to call. Right, but I now think that's... Claim, go ahead. What's your claim? I, I, my claim is that I blew a kiss to CT Law at a totally different time in the tournament. It was a totally different kiss, totally different situation. Uh, not that it makes it any different. I've actually, I don't care about setting the record straight too much, but as long as you bring it up, that is my claim. I claim ESPN edited it. Um, you know, because as we've discussed, took the kiss from one right, part of you, the broadcast and put it into the. I was at that tournament, and you, sweating you, and you did blow the kiss during that hand. I remember you being there for maybe like the first eight minutes of action. I wasn't there for the whole time, okay, but right. I was there when you kissed him. I think it's possible that you your memory is enhanced by the broadcast. That could be true. Uh, you know, it seems I'm unlikely not, that at the crucial moment when. I really don't think bluff. I blew him a kiss. When you make the bluff, I mean, blowing a kiss might be something to induce a guy to 
to call or do something, but it seems like if you've got a big bluff out there, that'd be a pretty gutsy move. Yeah, I really No, no, that is total shame. No, 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 because the thing, I, the hand, I remember blowing the kiss on. Now, maybe, who knows, maybe I was, you know, unconscious. You're not denying that your personality is, you, you I not, might do something You're not weird. sitting there frozen when you're bluffing. You're, you're still loose, and you may do something. No, it depends. I try to be fairly stern, regardless of what I'm doing. Oh, that's yeah, why I actually stern. think, no, that's why I actually think the, the hand, I, I did blow the kiss. I kind of wanted to call. It was like, I had nines, and CT Law raised. Uh, maybe you kissed and several times. Several. I don't interviews. think so. I would. I would. I don't know. I mean, it would be so valuable for me. I'm going to go ask, ask, ask the, the ESPN guys to look at that. Yeah. I, I, I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I would love that. That would be I'll amazing. I'll up for Shane on this though and say that I'm Greg, not putting him down. I, I, no, I just, well, Greg Raymer. Greg Raymer was telling me that uh, when he won the main event, there is a scene where there's a, a big hand comes down. And uh, he turns like to his wife and does something, and she's like crying, and you know. And he told me that she, you know, because he didn't know whether he'd make the final table or whatever. She just flown in that day, and she missed like the first half of the final table. Oh, she only made it to the afternoon, and that when he knocked that guy out, she was she still on the, on the plane. She right. hadn't arrived yet, so that so he knew for certain that that had been just. We all we know that they do. So we know they're capable of splicing stuff in. Yeah. I actually have no so problem with it. It's not. The, uh, I, it's just for accuracy's sake. Right. I, I would love to be able to actually see the original footage, yeah. just for my own well, sanity. You're not annoyed, are you? No. The one no. thing, the one thing that I did see on ESPN, which clearly is not the result of editing, was a near welterweight or possibly bantamweight bout between you and some... Eric Molina. Okay, actually, no, no, but Eric also, Molina. Shane might be a welterweight. That kid is like 110 pounds. And he's a flyweight. <laughs> he's a flyweight, yeah. yeah. He's like a fly. So, so what about weight. that? Well, okay, see, that's actually a, a good, an example of um, truth in editing, too, because although the kid did piss me off, did get under my skin, and was uh, partially responsible for my explosion, what really caused but, the explosion the was a bad it? floor ruling. Okay. I get to the table... Uh, I'm new to the table, it's Molina's table, and he's got chips, and I think he's drunk and or whatever on his adrenaline rush. You know, I, I have, whatever, the fact that he acted like a douchebag, I really, I forgive him, I don't care. But I don't, I don't. He was doing a lot of talking. Just for the sake of reporting how it was, he was very out of control, kind of, very much like... He's the single worst example of behavior at a poker table that I've seen. Absolutely, but I mean, who, I've, who, I've who does that affect worse than himself? I mean... Uh, that's was not. He, the, that's, was he, that's an well, other was, point. Was, well, I think that's that is the point. It's like no, you're allowed he to affects express a lot of other people. Ooh, okay, but worse himself. He reflects most poorly on oh, himself. Oh, he does reflect on himself, but he also hurts other people was with his commentary. Of, he's he's the biggest asshole I've ever seen. But was he's so hard, of, he's a net. Go was on. this part of his game plan, like trying to throw people off his game? My hunch is he came in with a lot of like energy and adrenaline. Uh, he's a punk kid, fearless college kid. Probably knows a thing or two about poker. Then combined with the alcohol, I just. Oh, he was, he was drinking. I think it was alcohol on that day. All right, so I get to the table. He's and making a lot of noise. He winds up making this one mistake. I mean, I was just sitting there really quiet, just like watching, trying to figure out the dynamic at first. He takes that stupid all-in button that we had last year, uh, and there's a hand where it gets raised in the button. He re-raises out of the big button. Now the button, like, instantly pushes. He takes the, bu the, the all-in button and says, I'm going to flip this, and if it lands on heads, I'm going to call in. So he takes it and flips it all in in the middle of, of the felt, which, as we know, is already a binding all-in, right. which gets exposed. To For the people that don't know, last year at the World Series, they get old your company, button. Milwaukee's Light, all oh, well, in button. Yeah, I was trying not to mention the. And why not? And fuck them. They, they don't do anything. For and us. they announced early on. They announced early on, if that button is in the pot. Just like any other chip, that's a binding all in. Right. So they and said, everyone be very careful, because some people were joking around with it, flipping it around. Yeah. They said, be really careful. We've had some bad incidents. I took mine and put it in my you pocket. Know. Oh, I, and, and I, I, I put it in my pocket it immediately because I could just see where somehow I had it in my chip stack and then I forgot. Right. And, moved and it knocked it off by accident. All knows, kinds so. of stuff. And this was day two already. It was so a horrible this is well idea. Known. So he takes the button and is fussing around with it, being cute like you mentioned. And everyone at the table is like, well, that's an all in already. So he winds up losing a bunch of chips in that hand. He's got ace two. The button had queens. Now, the real problem, like, he was an asshole, but someone being an asshole at the table is not really enough to set me off in and of itself. What happened was this. I made a standard raise, blinds are 300 and 600. I raised, uh, like, a six suited in early middle position mm -hmm. to 1800. It gets folded to him in the big blind. He's got more chips than me. Let's say, we, let's say I have 20K and he's got 40. I don't really know either. Right. Um, and he's making hands, by the way. He's playing poker, you know, mm -hmm. and that's all feeding into, like, the alcohol. He's one of the chip leaders. He so played really well. well. That's not my issue. He was playing okay. I mean, besides that ace-two hand, which was just atrocious. That long makes mistakes. Well, that, I mean, that was, a, with the flip, yeah. that was ridiculous. But, you know, I, I thought for sure he's going to make a mistake that will, uh, you know, affect him even worse than that ace-two did. Yeah, somehow he avoided all that, despite the alcohol. Whatever. Anyway, 
I make it 1800. Gets to him in the big blind. Action is folded to him. He says the following words. I call you're all in. <laughs> and, I mean, we all sit there kind of like puzzled, like trying to figure out what, what he means. And I, I realize what he means to say is, I put you all in, which is not a binding action either, by the way. Uh, although people try, they'll say, I put you all in. It's really not a binding action. But what he said was, I call you're all in. Well, we'll get into that in a second. That's, yeah. that's sort of minutia. I mean, right. technically, if you say, I put you all in, that you're not making a bet. You're just, whatever. You should... Doesn't matter. He said the words, I call, you're all in. The first two words out of his mouth right. were, I call. We're like, what the hell? And the dealer clarifies that he wanted, what he did in fact want to do was put me all in. Right. But it's but, a little different from in Maverick, they're going, I call you, it's, okay. and I'm going to raise. Exactly. I call you 400, <laughs> and I'm going to raise 8,000 more. And I love Maverick. As, as and absurd as it is, this is really well, the same thing. Oh, it's exactly the same thing. So, floor, obviously, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm, we're going to call floor. You know where you the dealer, the dealer, the floor says, "Okay, what's the situation?" The, the dealer describes it sat, to my satisfaction. He says the action gets folded to the man in the big blind, and he says, "I call you all in." The floor man sits there and goes, with three seconds of deliberation, most says, "I'm going to have to rule that and all in." I lost my shit. I, all right, and I say, "How can you do that?" This is and this is where most of the the ESPN freakout coverage comes right. from. They didn't catch that. They caught only the aftermath. Right. Well, of course. Now they, the way they spliced it, it made it look like I was reacting to something Molina did, which I was. But not really. It was really because of the floor rule. I said, I said "Look, man, yeah. that that is like ruling in favor of a string bet." Yeah. He says, "No, it can't be a string bet. A string bet has to involve chips." <laughs> I, I would, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what I would I do. Mean, this is opening up the possibility of angle shooting by anybody. It's just so ridiculous. In the world, so. I, I can't believe I didn't ask for a second appeal, but I was visibly agitated. And then, like one of the other floor men, kind of like stood over me. Like they have a sort of menacing way in ours. I'm not, you know, I'm not very happy with the way. They're used to dealing with guys who are trying to rig the slot machines or, or uh, <laughs> is that stick true? With each other. Well, well no, that's the that's the overall attitude. That's think, why they're right. Brody. And not that he was doing that, but just right. it's their casino mentality. I think part of the thing. Yeah, sorry, I think part of the, no, I think, <laughs> it's a I casino think, mentality in a poker room, which is not appropriate. Yeah, I just think part of it is. You're right. That, I mean, they are short of experienced people. I mean, they've. Their 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 deal, their deal, which you know you can defend or not. Their deal is that if you're going to work in the World Series, you need to be a, a full-time, year-round Harris employee. They're not hiring people to be floor men or to run the tournament just for the tournament. It used to be that in the World Series of Poker, they'd bring people on just for that right. month and a half or whatever. Harris has said, if you want to work, you know, all our people are our employees full-time. So that limits the pool by a lot. And, for example, this year or last year, when there are a lot of tournaments, simultaneous tournaments even, they have a lot of people who are very experienced casino supervisors who are not poker supervisors during right. the year, they work in the pit or right. they work in the side area or whatever. So, you know, one problem is they really don't know poker that well. And, you know, one story that I've that I've uh, heard repeatedly is that, you know, during the horse tournament the player asked one of the floor men, you know, what's the lowest hand in a Raz? And they thought, you know, it was like a six four. You know, they didn't know that <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And the other problem is, I think in some cases, like Adam says, most casino personnel, I mean, they're there to watch out for that small percentage of people who are going in to pull some sort of scam on the right. casino. And now, as it turns out, ironically, this guy was pulling a scam, not on the casino, but on you, unintentionally maybe, but no, sure. something where he could get an advantage. But they're not, you know, what they're trying to do is make sure people don't get out of line. Uh, well, actually, out of line, I'm sorry. Them out. Be before, I mean, I want to give credit to the, I mean, I am friendly with some of the foremen who work yeah. full-time on the, on the World Series circuit. They're mm -hmm. players themselves. They're trying hard to make the yeah. tournament nice. It's, you know, it's a matter of they're caught up in the corporate run And regardless, too. they don't want people go getting out of control and having some fight or something break out. Maybe they think oh. that... You right, know, bantamweight championship is about to break out, <laughs> so they are standing there to try to. Right, I mean, which you know what that would, and, and, and ironically, that wouldn't have even come close to happening. I th there was no, there's no violence. I'm not a violent person. Yeah. I'm never going to violently interact with someone at a poker table unless it gets really right. extreme. But they don't know. So they don't know that. But the, ironically, I mean, I was reacting to their incompetence. So, so what happened? Just quick finish. So they one. ruled it in all in. He, he pushed and all in. I folded my my weak ace. Yeah. You know. But I mean, in any competent floor ruling situation, that's a call I get to of see course. a lot. But now um, we saw the, the exchanges between you and this other guy, at least what they showed. Right, and then he wound up busting me. Then I wound up like, uh, you know, this is all part of my ace rag problem, but like, you know, he raised, I shoved with um, ace six or something. He had seven. He had sevens. And he said, I'm going to call just to bust you. Something like that. Yeah. Um... I don't really have a problem with that. I just have a problem with all his other behavior. No, right. it was, later days also. Yeah, and again, it was, you know, he he was a dick. But again, that wouldn't have really bothered me as much 
if the floor had just ruled on that one hand right. correctly, I could have faded all his terrible behavior and just, you know. Yeah. It's a combination of it all that, yes. that makes for a lot of frustration. Shane, yeah. you had an interesting uh, prop bet last year, or uh, <laughs> I think it was last year, with uh, the donator, Stuart Patterson. Stuart Patterson. You, you want to describe that proposition bet you had? You know what I'm talking well, about? Well, it was kind of like late in the series, and I was like sort of feeling in a funk, in a haze, if you will. And I, I, said, I will. And I, I said I have to change something up, and uh, I told Stu that I'm not going to smoke pot because I'm a daily pot smoker, uh, basically. And Stu was like, uh, you know, I get, you know, I'll give you like even money on a week or something, and I made it three or four days. That's the short version. You had to settle the bet, didn't? You? I, we settled the bet, yeah. So you couldn't make um, it to the week. I well, couldn't make like, it a whole week. Too God no. knows you could never go. A week. No. no, I've heard a version that was like thirty days. Yeah, it was a month. <laughs> which of course was. I don't think it was thirty days. It was a month. It was a month yeah. originally. Yeah. Well, I mean, there you go. Short term memory loss. So you made it about ten percent. Yeah. You made it about ten percent of the way. You made it three days and had to. Was settle. it a month? I thought yeah. it was a week. No, it was a month. Really? Yeah. No, I doubt I would have endeavored to take a whole. Would you care to have a prop bet on that? Um, no. I, and, and the source will be your blog, okay? Of course, yeah, yeah. right. No, I wouldn't. I mean, <laughs> we, you know, we were talking about bloggers on, on another show because the blog phenomenon is exploded even more rapidly than just the whole poker phenomenon. And, and apparently blogging is even bigger than I thought. I was recounting a story where, where, where they threw some, some youngster who was drunk and acting out of line at the win, and you know, as they threw him out the door, he was yelling, I'm a blogger! <laughs> This is true. Attica! Yeah. Attica! Yeah. Attica. <laughs> I'm a blogger. And, uh, I'm a blogger. So I didn't know that it was that, <laughs> that prestigious. I didn't either. But you, have, but, but but you actually you have, have an a excellent blog. blog. I mean, we had Paul Wascon, and, and his blog is, I think, phenomenal in, in how analytical he is. It's supposedly his, his hand. Yeah, last but, year his blog was. But, but in, another, in, a, in a different category, I mean, your blog is the most literary most interesting blog in, in the sense of really giving a perspective about the world of poker and kind of this milieu that's that's developed. But I'm also sure it's disconcerting because Shane has interests outside of poker like reading and music yeah. and other setting. I skip so, over. I, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I you don't like to be reminded of the outside of, world? I kind of skip over all that. Yeah, all that, other all that stuff. chin music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, my, my background before poker was in writing, so I'm really trying to combine the, the you know, the poker is sort of like my last salvation and writing was, you know, my first First hope, but I never really made the writing thing happen just because I was young. And he writes in full sentences, and he doesn't use a lot of like LOL or dunkaments. No, it's, I, it's, I, it's I, I, I try to apply the same standards of uh, journalistic. You know, I, I, I was at, you know we had, at my high school. We had a great school paper, so we actually learned like the fundamentals of journalism, like right there when we were like fifteen, sixteen. Do you provide a lot of perspective into just and kind then, of the whole, uh, the whole psychology and the whole mentality of being a poker player, because. Uh, obviously, it's not just the winning and the losing, but it's like dealing with either a lot of you know big rush of fame or a big rush of of, uh, of winning, or going through the doldrums of, of a losing streak and oh, yeah. dealing with all you know with the traveling and or and even with um, kind of the the unreality, which is probably is not even a word, but just the, the lack of reality, the surreality reality. of uh, you know of being in a tournament where you just kind of lose perspective of even what time of day it is yeah. or what day it is. Or where you I mean, are. It's very, yeah. very interesting. And kind of the transient relationships that you form and that kind of pick up and, and ebb. Well, I mean, that's, you know, I feel I'm, I have a, a sort of unique perspective in that way, too. Just like I've, you know, I really wandered aggressively, aimlessly in my 20s. Like, I didn't, you know, like a lot of these kids come into the game, like, with with a purpose. They already know that they can play. They already know what they're going to do. I sort of, like, backdoored my way into the game. And along the way, I, I met all kinds of different people. Like, you know, I, I explored just a lot of different sort of subcultures. And to me, poker is just, like, another subculture mm -hmm. that I've stumbled into. So I can sort of explore it from that angle. It's like, you know... A lot, there are a lot of people more qualified to comment on aspects of the, the game technically than I am. Like uh, Eric Molina, for example. Well, I mean, you know, like Paul Wasaga. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, All right. uh, I, you know, to, I feel the, pr the unique perspective, the only unique perspective I can offer is, is how it, you know, relates to the other things that I've seen in life that are also kind of crazy and on the fringe. And I mean, this, you know, this is the only reason I, I get along well in poker is just it suits my lifestyle and it suits kind of like my need to live on the fringe. It's hard to, to be self-analytical, but especially now that you've gotten into kind of the touring aspect of it where you're spending months on the road in hotel rooms, you know, with different groups, I mean, uh, have you noticed a, just a change and effect on, on your own perspective, your own self? Uh, you know, it's... 
Yes and no. It's sort of like, I feel like in a big way I'm living the dream, you know? Like, uh, when I was younger, all I wanted to do was travel and, and chill and eat well, smoke well. And, that, and that's <laughs> what I get to do now. I just turned 30, and I mean... Sweet Lord, man. <laughs> is yeah. The, is the poker more a vehicle for that? Or it, yeah, it is. I, I look at it more like a vehicle for that. I don't, I don't try to approach the tour with, like, you know, try to hit every tournament that I can. Mm -hmm. I'm really into, you know... I, if, if, I, if, if I can somehow find myself in a place where I enjoy being there and there's a good tournament, yeah. that's like the best, you know? It's like Monte Carlo was amazing. I'd love to, you know, I've never been to London. would like to um, do the London events this year. Uh, Turks and Caicos is another place I've never been. It's almost like they, they hand you these, like, amazing travel opportunities right. on a silver platter. So I'm not going to Tunica because... You know, what, what, I, don't, I don't. You know, know you told me that the softest tournament in the world was there. I'm just not going to go there because I know how that affects my mentality. But the game and itself, I got a girlfriend at home. The game itself is not as much a vehicle for some self actualization as as the experiences on the on the tour and what are you, some kind of psychology. I agree. I agree yeah. with that. I don't know, Dr. Phil type. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I, th I think I agree with whatever you just said. I think you got a good. It's both. I think you got a good tunica. You might go. <laughs> you you actualize your, yourself there. You might go with some material for your. Uh, I, you know, I went to Oklahoma uh, for the Scotty Wynn Invitational. They confiscated my weed. It's just like I guess they the confiscated your weed. They, I mean, they being the, su the security guard at the hotel. Were you like, smoking out in the hallway or like, no? It but it was out? It wafted out. They really? Can't take your weed. They're not. A it was brutal. It was, was like, there, this was a it was like a super troopers type of situation. <laughs> well, you're the guy. I'm glad it was a super troopers and not a my cousin Vinny situation. Well, know. true. Very you're true. You're down in Oklahoma. You're some that's all right, no. youngster from New York. Who who knows what could have happened? I, exactly. You, I mean, you could have hanged at that point, I was just happy not to get in cuffs. And then I broke my not to be in cuffs. I, and then I broke my friend's car. He's got like a new cheap Cherokee. Was, you broke it. I broke his car. I mean, I, this all happened in the you, same you, trip. In human strength, you ripped the door off. I haven't heard the that point term is the, years where you just. <laughs> I, <laughs> You can start his car from the outside. Yeah, right. It's like you burned uh, out the starter. No, tell me what the purpose of that is anyway. So you, you start the car from the outside. It's no, warm no, no. When it's so I still, I for some reason, all right. You want the whole story? We're going to the car to smoke weed because uh, of the incident. Because we can't smoke indoors anymore. This is why I, I don't leave the coast, basically, or whatever. You are in America now. Uh, exactly. I'm in the middle of fucking nowhere, and it's brutal. Anyway, so I start his car from the outside. I'm going to try driving it. I put the key in, but I don't turn on the ignition. Uh, because, you know, the car's already running, so, you know, force of habit, you don't turn the ignition when the okay. car's running, because you know that creates a horrible screech. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, that's terrible. So I, so I'm like trying to put the car in gear, and he's like, and I'm like, it's not going, it's not going. He's like, just, just pull it, and I pull it, and I force it, and I break something. And it's the car's been kaput for like two weeks. And it's brand new, like fancy ass Jeep. Jeeps are terrible cars. Oh, they are. By the way, yes. Uh, and then I bubbled the tournament, and and then I had to bail on my friend. It was like the worst trip ever. I had to bail on my friend. I was like, dude, I gotta get back to California. <laughs> I had agreed to drive the whole part. Like, he was like, "I'll fly you to Oklahoma, and uh, you got to drive with me to Vegas." And I was like, "Sure, whatever. That sounds good." It's material. That's the important thing. It's more material. You're right. And by the way, I should apologize to all my blog readers. I've kind of been slack. I mean, it's just hard to get all this shit We're, done. Really. What's, what's the URL for your blog? Uh, Shaniacoonline.blogspot.com. You can always Google my name. Um, uh, and the word blog. But Shaniac.com. Uh, Shaniac.com is, no, sh some, no, some dude in Arizona named Shaniac.com. He's squatting. Yeah. <laughs> I called him and I, I, I got to call him again. He was like, ah, dude, I kind of want to Shaniac.com slash blogspot. Shaniacoonline.blogspot.com. Oh, the well, easiest thing to do is go to Google yeah. and Google my name and the Very word blog. Uh, you can ask Adam how to use the interweb later. He's pretty good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, thanks for joining us. Thank good you luck for in all me. your tournaments. You bring you brought us a perspective that perhaps our other guests won't. Uh, I hope so. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us from Blanchard. Take care.